According to the polls, Governor Bill Clinton and President George Bush are in a statistical tie for the white vote, 44 to 43 percent. Clinton's entire national lead of 7 to 18 points, depending on the poll, is accounted for by the black vote. Clinton leads Bush by 15 to 1 among blacks, and blacks will cast almost 25 percent of all Democratic votes. Blacks comprise a very important, and in the case of the Democratic Party, a very reliable voting bloc. Having said that, meaning who they will vote for, who should they vote for. I'm Tony Brown. In a moment, election 92, who should blacks vote for? Tony Brown's journal is brought to you by Pepsi and its bottlers. This program is a part of Pepsi-Cola's continuing support of your community's cultural, educational, and business interests. My first guest is Mr. Maurice Perkins. Mr. Perkins is the Northeast Ohio Volunteer Coordinator for the Ross Perot Presidential Campaign. My next guest is Dr. Gloria Toot. Dr. Toot is an attorney and well-known Republican who served as an advisor to Presidents Nixon, Ford, Reagan, and Bush. My next guest is Mr. Adam Clayton Powell IV. Mr. Powell is the son of Adam Clayton Powell Jr. and a New York City councilman. He is a supporter of the Clinton-Gore campaign. My next guest is the Reverend Calvin Butts. Reverend Butts is pastor of Abyssinian Baptist Church in New York City and is spearheading the campaign of independent presidential candidate Ron Daniels. Lady and gentlemen, thank you for being with us. If we might start uh, with uh, you, uh, Mr. Powell, since your man is, your men are way out front of everyone else, uh, why do you feel blacks should? Now, I don't think anyone here is, well, maybe someone will contest, but I will not, uh, will contest that uh, whether or not blacks are going to vote in largest numbers for Mr. Clinton. I think he will carry, and most polls and prognosticators believe he will carry the black vote. I'm not going to ask you, would or will blacks vote? I'm going to ask you, should blacks vote for Clinton and Gore? Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, over the last 12 years of the Reagan-Bush quail uh, Republican government, we have seen uh, a total disrespect, a total alienation of the African-American community. Uh, we, have, uh, we see the figures uh, where a few have gotten richer, but the most uh, have gotten poorer. And for the first time in, uh, in recent generations, we have a community who is not doing even as well, perhaps, as their parents did 20 years ago. Uh, George Bush has vetoed civil rights legislation. He has lifted the sanctions from uh, the government of South Africa, even though apartheid is still the regime in that country. Uh, by, by contrast, Bill Clinton is a person who, who stands for change, who stands for the civil rights of all people in this country who has pledged to restore the economic sanctions to the government of South Africa and who has indicated uh, the ability and, and, and the compromise he has to work with all people, African Americans included, uh, in this country to make a difference, to restore some of the faith that we have lost in our government. Do you uh, place any credence in the charge by so many uh, blacks and black elected officials, in particular in Congressman Rangel of New York uh, specifically, that uh, President Clinton has insulted black people by staying away from the black community to woo the white vote? No, not at all. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, he's not a perfect candidate. Nobody is. But I do believe he is a, 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 a new choice, a, a fresh face, so to speak, in the White House, and somebody who we can certainly work with, somebody whose door we can knock on, and he will respond. On the other hand, we have seen what 12 years of the Reagan, Bush, Quail uh, period has done to this country, to African Americans in particular, and I don't think we want four more years of that. Bill Clinton is a decent man. He has a very good record, an excellent record in the state of Arkansas. He was voted the best governor by his peers, both Republicans and Democrats, in a survey last, last year in the uh, Newsweek article. So the fact is that we have somebody with the credentials, with the ability, and with the enthusiasm to lead us to the White House. Uh, Dr. Toot, uh, why should blacks vote for President Bush, and should blacks, as they are now predicted, should blacks vote in such large numbers for Governor Clinton? 
Well, the Bush record is, I think, one that, that blacks can appreciate. You've got Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court bench. We did not expect, really, to have an African-American replace Thurgood Marshall. We've got Sullivan in, in the cabinet. We have Colin Powell in the White House. We've got a, a man who understands the problems of African-Americans and who's trying to solve those problems. And, and his programs relate to what we as African-Americans can understand, empowerment, economic empowerment. Um, his health care program, his education program, Head Start getting more money than at any time in the history of this nation. But as it relates to Bubba Clinton, he frightens me. Anytime a southerner, a white southerner, before the media says, my, call me Bubba, call my, 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 my friend, my, my co-mate Bubba, that's a, a word that in the South has meaning. And I should think that we African Americans ought to understand that meaning also. His first campaign ad, welfare, against welfare, bringing down welfare, taking people off of welfare. Here is a man whose state does not have a fair housing law, does not have any civil rights commission in the entire state. Here is a man whose state was found to have such poor apportionment for voting patterns that the federal court came in knowing you're going to have a 1990 census and said, I'm not going to let this state have one more day. 1989, we're going to change the districts. He appealed it. He appealed a decision that clearly said that blacks were not being empowered to vote in his state. He goes to country clubs to play golf where there are no black members, and he says, I don't know why you want to make a big deal out of that. His state, for experience, we've got counties in Detroit bigger than his, the population of his whole state. His state ranks between 40 and 50th in everything in America, in percentile. In education, the state is behind. In wages, not only is it behind the national wage, it's behind too. the southern wage. Right. Uh, now, if uh, uh, Governor Clinton is such a bad person and the public is privy, black people are privy to the same information that you are, not all of it, but most of it, why in your mind are blacks rejecting President Bush by 15 to 1? I'm not sure how we're going to vote on election day, and I don't think that's going to hold true. I think that when we get to the polling booth, we're going to have to remember that Jesse Jackson is not doing very well either with his candidate, that there are a number of blacks that aren't. This man hasn't said a thing about statehood for the District of Columbia. You would think that with the, if he's going to get that black vote, he certainly ought to talk about statehood and putting two black senators in, 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 in Washington. I'm not that sure. And it's going to be up to the Republican Party to get this information out. But I don't think that African-American voters are as knowledgeable as I am on the track record of Bubba, who wants to be called Bubba. Uh, Mr. Perkins, you are uh, uh, affiliated in a very staunch promoter of uh, Mr. Ross Perot for president. Uh, w what is your case? A, should blacks vote for Mr. Perot? And should they, in such large numbers as is predicted, vote for Governor Clinton? It's uh, quite obvious to all Americans, regardless of their political affiliation, that our country is in trouble polit uh, economically, as well as in many respects socially. Our leadership in the past have contributed greatly to the condition of our country. It's not the people's fault. The people no longer own the government. It's owned and controlled by PACs and special interest groups. Perot is saying what the people want. Let's take back our government. Those who have put us in this condition still decide to run for public office. The American people said, no, it's not going to happen this time. We're going to go to the polls, and we're going to elect our candidate, the candidate for the people, Ross Perot. Now, as far as <clears throat> whether they should or should not vote for Ross Perot, we at the town halls across America staunchly support Ross Perot for the President of the United States because we know he is for the people. The economic conditions of our country are getting worse by the minute, but yet our leadership does relatively little. In the case of Bill Clinton, you can look at the state of Arkansas and you can see what he has done to Arkansas. It's a state which has a right to work law. Unions are nearly outmoded or outvoted in that state. How can he come to the people and say, vote for me, when he doesn't even support 
organization of unions within that state. He's done a poor job with Arkansas. He'll even do a poor job for Americans. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. Black people have an incredible stake in this election as we've had in all the ones in the past. Our economic conditions in the black communities throughout America have been devastated by our leadership. Ross Perot will bring forth economic conditions which will enhance the earning ability and obtaining jobs for black people. As Ross has said, if you do not have jobs in America, you have nothing. We're at the threshold of either economic chaos or this election, we're going to vote for Ross Perot and put this country on its feet again and create jobs and create an economic base as well as upgrade the, econo the educational base of this country and break bring back America to its greatness. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Perkins, um, blacks are not in significant numbers as of these current polls in support of Mr. Perot. Perhaps they've missed something. Perhaps they haven't considered him. Perhaps they've only considered the two major candidates. A book recently released named Bankruptcy 1995 documents in, with numbers that by 1995, all taxes collected, personal and business taxes, will amount to only 85% of the interest on the debt, which means that if this is true, and one can get the book and determine for themselves if it is, the American government will not be able to pay its bill, i.e. it will be insolvent. Therefore, there will be no Medicaid checks, no Medicare checks, no Social Security checks. There will be no society as we know it. Mr. Perot has said things, to, words to this effect. But the American public, I think he's, as of this taping, is about 14 or 15 percent, as I have discerned, in the polls which means that the American people are not buying his sacrifice and his pain prescription to take care of this problem. Then how can you make the point that we as Americans, black Americans in particular, who are socioeconomically probably at the bottom of the barrel, should support a man who is asking them to accept more pain and more sacrifice? As you know, Tony, uh, the lives of all black people has meant sacrifice from slavery until today. Ross Perot is saying what everyone knows, and he has had the courage to step forward and tell the nation. He's just reiterating what people are thinking. Now, relating to black people and the condi economic conditions, currently, we have a national debt exceeding $4 trillion, of which will exceed, by the turn of the century or the year 2002, seven or eight trillion. As you indicated, our income in this country exceeds what the overhead is. Technically, this country is bankrupt. We are the largest debtor nation in the world. And you know, and everyone knows, there is a day of reckoning. America is at that threshold. Now, we can either bring this country up or we can let our leadership bring this country down further. Now, we're going to come back in a moment to that point and see what each of the major candidates plans to do about that problem. But we're now going to hear from uh, Reverend Butts, who's been so patient. Reverend Butts, you are backing uh, Mr. Ron Daniels, who is black and who is independent uh, and who um, is, uh, has an agenda, uh, basically, I would call it a progressive agenda. I think you would agree with that term. What is your case? for voting for Ron Daniels. I think he's on the ballot in 15 states. That's right. What is your case for voting for Ron Daniels instead of the current front runner, uh, Mr. Uh, or Governor Clinton? Because I believe that Governor Clinton represents the status quo, as does Mr. Bush, as does Ross Perot. I've been a Democrat as long as I've been able to vote. I took a foray into independent politics with Mr. Perot and I would say we dare not risk him changing his mind again. And uh, the Republicans have not done any more or any less than the Democrats. Black people will suffer. It's like if you vote for Beelzebub, Satan, or the evil spirit, you catch the same hell. And there has to be a time when black people dare
to move away from politics as usual. I have respected those who have decided that we should not put all of our eggs in one basket. That's very clear. No longer should we be taken for granted as the Democrats do. But we cannot be ignored as the Republicans have. We cannot be treated as if we're just on the side and a few of us. We have to have more. So I'm backing Mr. Daniels because I believe that it's time, and it's happening more and more, Tony, and I congratulate you and others for making it happen, that black people begin to think more creatively about how we use our votes. Mr. Daniels has pointed out, and rightly so, that the largest political party in America are those who are unregistered and those who don't vote. And there's a reason for that, because people are not uh, engaged by what we have. And so therefore, I say to those who are willing to take this risk, because I believe that Bush or Clinton will win, but I don't think that things are going to change significantly for people of African descent. So I'm saying vote on a principal position. Take a look at the agenda for a new tomorrow. This is really the construction of what Jesse Jackson should have been doing. Jesse was a big disappointment. For eight years we followed him. We gave Jesse whatever he wanted. And basically, we got nothing. And therefore, now he was treated like a dog by the Democrats. And now we have to rebuild, not necessarily a party, we can look at that, but at least an independent movement. We might have, in an independent movement, decided not to go with Clinton and to throw our support behind Bush to really show the Democrats that you just can't take us for granted. But I say, let's look at this independent movement. Let's take a look at what politics can mean. I thought Perot had a good plan, but you see, we gave him, as speechwriters and consultants when I was a part of his campaign, what he should address at the NAACP. But he turned out to be the same kind of white man we've been used to dealing with. He wouldn't say what he wanted to say and embarrassed himself. And then he dropped out, leaving those of us who took an early position for him out on a limb. He must be crazy if he thinks we're going to come back and all of a sudden jump on his bandwagon again. Mr. Clinton, as Dr. Tudor has pointed out, is not someone that I think we can trust. He's going to wind up maybe making a few more blacks, as it has been said about the Republicans, have higher positions. But the Republicans have not really done that much for those who've been loyal to them. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, remember, we are faced with a status quo situation if these, one of these three men win. Let's, let's talk about, if we may, uh, the realities of your proposal. <clears throat> you are a credible black person in a leadership position, and no one uh, will uh, uh, say to the contrary. You took a lot of heat just by not going along with the black Democratic establishment. That's I mean, correct. they they said things about you that uh, were pretty pretty bad, and certainly many of many of the things they said aren't true. Now you're in a position to just sophisticated enough to fend them off. You are stable enough economically and socially and politically to survive. But how feasible is it for the average black man or woman to talk and behave the way you do? And that is, well, I'm not gonna go along with the, uh, with the Democratic uh, uh, game. I'm not gonna follow Jesse Jackson into the abyss. I'm not going to be, con uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to vote for whomever I want. How realistic is that in the black community? If I can't speak to those who are of a generation or two before me, let me speak to those who are behind me and with me in terms of Malcolm. Malcolm used to tell a story about the house Negro versus the field Negro. And he would say, the field Negro would say, Master, our house is burning. <laughs> While the field Negro would say, you know, Master, the, I mean, or, you know, the master's house is burning. My point here is... I hope a big wind comes up. Yeah, it <laughs> burns it down. My point here is... We have nothing really to lose and everything to gain in terms of principle, self-respect, dignity. People would say, what sense does it make to use a black college campus to have a major convention, to, 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 to spend money with your own only, that freedom ain't free, to buy black? We all catch heat for taking radical positions, but I think it's time that we did because we are not we are not making any progress. Dr. Two points out we lost the uh, venerable and distinguished Third Good Marshal. We now have Clarence Thomas. You got one black replacing another one. You don't move forward, you just sort of stay where you are. Clinton is not gonna really make it that better. 
They say Jimmy Carter appointed more judges to the federal bench across the nation. That may be true, but I remember Hooks. I remember the head of the Urban League, Jacobs. And I remember other, quote, civil rights and establishment type leaders criticizing Carter because he didn't do anything significant for black in the Bronx where I lived. He went to Charlotte Street, looked around, and that was it. I think we should also remember that uh, uh, Jimmy Carter did not carry the white vote. That's interesting, uh, too. He got 48% of the white vote, and if he had not gotten 95% plus of the black vote, he would not have been elected. And, and, and that's where the genesis is of, of insisting he do something. Yes, Dr. Well, what I think is also important, this is your show, and one thing I like about your show is you talk about money. If anybody in America has to be concerned about inflation, the deficit, and increased taxes, it's got to be African Americans and Latinos. There is no question. Clinton has said, I'm raising taxes. Now, the man has said, I'm only going to raise it on those who make 200000 or above. But as you and I know, when it comes to legislation, and you say you're going to raise it for one, you end up with that Christmas tree Democrats always come up with. It's going to be affecting more than just those making 200000 a year. And what it's going to do is it's going to hurt this whole country economically. And we can't afford that because we're still the last hired and the first fired. So we've got to think in terms of the fact that with Republicans, we keep inflation down. We, we, we keep full employment as maximized as we can. And we certainly, he's not, George Bush will not make the same mistake twice. He's not going to raise taxes. Now, that should interest African-American voters. Have to, yeah. have we had to be brief, Captain. Some of these charges please, before please I explode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> George Bush pledged, as, as we all know now, uh, to raise, not, not to raise taxes when he said, read my lips, no new taxes. And yet, over the last four years, we've had the largest tax increase that this country has seen in its history. Uh, Bill Clinton will not raise taxes to the average person to 98% of the American population. He has only pledged to raise taxes on those who make $200,000 or more. Uh, the reality is that the state of Arkansas ra ranks 49th out of 50th in terms of taxes. So I don't think taxes should be a question here. Uh, and yes, while the state of Arkansas does rank low in certain other areas, the reality is that over the last 12 years since Governor Clinton has been in office, that state has improved from being one of the poorest in the country to at least being able to, to compete with, with the rest of the country. Also, Governor Clinton has spoken about a national health care plan, which President Bush has never uh, uh, want to even address. And uh, Governor Clinton has talked about many things. Uh, I mean, w we can look at President Bush and the record that he has. He vetoed the minimum wage bill that increased minimum wage to $4.55. He vetoed the Family uh, Leave Act, which would have given 12 weeks of unpaid leave to workers for illness uh, in the family or for birth in the family. Those are things that Governor Clinton will make the difference, uh, certainly a, a, a vast difference from, and, and further, if I may say, a vast difference from, from President Bush. He has agreed to support statehood for the District of Columbia, Governor Clinton. Okay. Uh, we have two moments. Uh, I'd like Mr. to address uh, the withdrawal of... Uh, Could you do it briefly? Yes, Ross Pro dropping out of the race. Okay. If you look in history, if you go back to your junior in high school, in high school, you'll find out that the father of our nation, George Washington, dropped out of the race. Harry Truman dropped out of the race. JFK didn't get in the race until 16 days prior to the election. We had many other presidents who literally dropped out of the race. Uh, LBJ dropped out of the race four times when he was running against Barry Goldwater before he decided that he would seek the presidency. So that's not an indication of whether a person should be president. And incidentally, each of those who dropped you out think, of the race... Uh, you think Mr. Barrow uh, can be president oh, with being so far behind in the polls? As, as, as Ross like Perot said, the, the polls mean nothing. What means something is the hearts and minds of the American people. Ross Perot is going to get elected because the people are fed up with the leadership. They, it really boils down to one thing. Truly, who do you trust? I personally, in my case, I'm a veteran of the U.S. military. Here we have a man... Yep, two seconds. Okay. Here we have a man who wants to seek the presidency, but yet he goes to foreign soils to actually speak against the United States. He who, goes who to are you speaking of? I'm speaking of Bill Clinton. He goes to the Soviet Union in time of war. As far as I'm concerned, that's treason. All right, uh, Mr. And, Mr. And, Mr. Black, and black people gave their lives in that war. Okay. And, in great numbers. All right, Mr. We have 30 seconds, uh, Reverend Butts, and you can take that. Mr. Brown, lady and gentlemen, we have played around with white people who have 
played on our fears and hopes for too long. Political parties are not golden calves, T. Thomas Fortune. We have got to think independently. And if there's anybody, I think, right at this table who is demonstrating an allegiance to what black folk ought to do, it's risky, it's dangerous. When the slave left the plantation and ran into the dark, he didn't know where he was going, but he did reach freedom. I'm saying break loose and try something different. And on that note, we're going to try something different because we're out of time. Thank you very much, <laughs> lady and gentlemen for a very spirited discussion. Thank you so much. Brown Productions produces this program and is solely responsible for its content. For nearly two decades, Tony Brown's journal has been brought to you by Pepsi and its bottlers. At Pepsi-Cola, we're committed to the communities we serve and their cultural, educational, and business interests. Tony Brown's journal is available on video and audio cassette. To order, call one 800 5 Two four three five five two. Credit cards accepted. This is PBS. Hello, I'm David Yepsen of the Des Moines Register and weekly reporter on Iowa Press. As a resource for Iowa's future, Iowa Public Television is helping you make intelligent choices about your future in its coverage of the election campaigns. And time is running out. Join us next week as we help you make sense of the issues, the major candidates, and the less well-known, their backgrounds and positions. We'll examine the campaign process and take some time to look at the lighter side. It's a tall order, but our future's at stake. So look to Iowa Public Television all next week for continuing coverage of Election 92. As two incumbents square off in North Central and Northeast Iowa, a heated battle is underway in Iowa's second congressional district. Democrat Dave Nagel seeks a fourth term in the U.S. House in Washington, D.C. Politics and policy and the election of 1992 with Congressman Dave Nagel. Join us for our weekly edition of Iowa Press, Sundays at noon and 7 p.m. on Iowa Public Television. Next time on Frontline... ...over $9 million through this event alone. ...who finances presidential campaigns... ...the largest fundraiser in Arkansas history. And what do they get in return? The private interest contributes dollars so they can get their crops. They look at politics as, uh, as an opportunity uh, to invest where they will reap large rewards. Frontline investigates the campaign financiers in the best campaign money can buy. Tune in to Iowa Public Television, Tuesday at 8. Hi, I'm Mark Russell with another comedy special on public television. You know, I've often wondered how we get through an election year without the humor that comes out of a presidential campaign. Sheer entertainment from both parties coming from their deadly serious platforms and promises and programs. I'll say this for them. At least they haven't charged us an entertainment tax yet. Tune in to Iowa Public Television Wednesday at 7. In a time when issues and...